Hello once again, it's Tubal Kane, and this video is devoted to the construction of this little wobbler type 3D printed uh, steam engine or air engine. And it's a collaboration between um, Kevin Peterson, who made uh, flywheels and a base and a few uh, parts for me. Uh, I put the thing together, but this actually is something that I took off a thing of her. So here's credit for that with the other collaborator who may not know anything about this. I hope he watches this video. This was taken off a of thing of hers and the creator is Synaptek. So he gets credit for the design of this engine and it runs incredibly well as you'll soon see. The 3D print consists of eight different parts. The frame, the connecting rod, the cylinder, the base, the uh, crank, the piston, the flywheel, and then this little uh, peg here, which I'm not going to use. I'm going to show you what I think is an improvement over that. But it could be made with strictly these 3D printed parts, but I'm going to add a few metal parts. This little engine runs so well that it'll run on halitosis alone. See what I mean? Now here's the improvements that I made. It was designed to run on one flywheel alone, but one flywheel to me doesn't have enough weight and enough mass to it and it, it is finicky. It will run, but it'll take a little more pressure than that. So what I had done is to take two of these, I printed out two, and I glued them with epoxy back to back and that gave it more weight. Also you get more weight by printing these 100% solid rather than like with a 50% fill but it takes a lot longer to print. However that still didn't give me quite the weight that I wanted so I wrapped a piece of solder. Crude looking? Yes, very crude. But in the redesign what I have done here is Kevin Peterson from Austin, Texas redesigned this for me. I sent them a little sketch of what I wanted or a little uh, t t talk and I told them I wanted a flywheel that is two and a quarter with a three eighths, a five sixteenths hole. Spoke it or make it any way you want and he chose to make six spokes and I said I want it to be a spool. Why a spool? A spool so I can wrap solder or copper wire or anything. This is solder to give it the extra weight that it needs. Now that looks a little sloppy but I can also put some black tape around there and you won't see it but really who cares. Now when it comes off the 3D printer this is what it looks like because that's the the support and that all comes out. It was kind of hard to get out but I did a couple of these. I did some of them as 50% fill and some uh, solids. This is the sample that I sent to Kevin Peterson telling him this is what I want. A spool. Just a simple spool. As all as that's made out of maple, but I like to think in three dimensions as I've told many of you before. So my redesign will use this little aluminum uh, crankshaft. It'll go through there and it'll go right onto here and I'll use either epoxy or Loctite. I'll probably use Loctite to hold that on. And then the way it was designed was rather than this system here, this little peg was to be used and went right through the frame and snapped. Really, you didn't need any glue, but it works better with glue. And this was snapped in. However, to me, you need, in a wobbler engine, you need some springiness to bring that against. Now in the 3D print that's a relatively rough surface. Maybe you can hear that. Also that <clears throat> that is so there's always going to be some leakage there and that's why I wanted a spring against it and this worked great as you can see that it would run on breath power. So this again is a little piece of aluminum, a spring, and that's a retaining ring which was kind of finicky so I'm going to try another way of holding that on there. But notice that the print even had a nipple here that would hold 
the hose. So I thought that was really well thought out. And, and uh, of course there are the two ports, an intake and an exhaust. And I've talked many times in other videos about the principles of this engine. So off camera now, I'm going to do a couple things. And one is I'm going to glue this onto the base. It does snap, but I think I'd rather glue it on. Boy, that is a nice fit though. And ultimately, some holes drilled into this base because it, it needs a base. I put this on wood and I had Kevin design that hollow on the bottom. So that's a nice, nice base. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. I don't really trust the super glue, but that's what I'm going to use here. We'll see what happens. It's about flush. All right, we'll set that aside, and I press fitted this in. It doesn't. Uh, it was such a good fit. I actually had to tap it in with a hammer, so I'm not going to glue that. So that's done, and then the piston had a little bit of what I'm told is called elephant foot on it. So in other words, it had a, a little ridge around here, and did not go in. I put it on the lathe real quickly and file that. This does not file well at all and this can be then pressed in like that. I'm going to have to file it just a little bit as I remember I did on the other one. I don't want to bang on this here because there's some hollow there and I know that'll probably break so notice that it's a good fit. Or is it? Yeah. In there. So and I did use a reamer, where's that? A 5 16 reamer to clean out this and, uh, and that. You know what I just discovered here moments ago? You know, magnets can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So I often use this little magnetic tray. I think it's from Harbor Freight, one of their giveaways. But as I was turning it over and cleaning it out earlier, you know what I discovered of all things? There were just numerous screws and nuts and other little parts stuck down here to the magnet, things that I had lost over the last several months and thought fell on the floor and gave up on, there they were. So I got to be careful of that. Now in my spring collection, and I have a far better selection than Ace Hardware or any other, probably better than McMaster car, but there's an extremely fine spring. I don't know what size it is, but it does fit over the 5 sixteenths just nice and as I told you moments ago that this was held on with one of those push type nuts or retaining things it was a struggle to get on so and uh, also concerning the spring I went when I did this a month or two ago I went down to Ace Hardware and I purchased a wavy washer you know what a wavy springy washer is but it was way too strong at least the ones they sold. I would have needed one that was maybe in some fine instrument or something so that we have some pressure there but not too much. I know I'm Gavin. You would too. I reamed this out so that, and I've glued this in and I, you know I had <laughs> I had too much super glue and a darner glued itself onto here so I wiped that off. It turns, swivels, wobbles, oscillates freely will always have some air leak. I think you can even see that uh, you can see light through there, but it, it will not really affect this. So what I'm doing here is putting that spring, and I made this a little bit longer than I did on the other. Now, when my brother, I loaned this to my brother out in Wyoming, and then he sent it back, but he sent this rubber tubing with it, and I noticed that he fastened it with a rubber band, which was about worthless, and then also some O-rings. And I thought, well, well, that's a good idea. I got the complete selection of O-rings, far better than what they sell at Home Depot. So I'm going to try this. I really need a very fine, you know, small, thin washer, but I'm not in the mood for looking for it right now. So I'm going to just put the O-ring on here and see if this works as a retainer. And... 
initially it seems to and I can change the amount of pressure by how far I push that in and it swivels freely. Also did I say this already I have super glued the con rod in and I'm almost ready for some assembly here but let's analyze these flywheels. Holy Toledo! The original one weighs 9 grams. So does that one. I don't remember how I printed these out, if, what the amount of fill is. I really don't remember. This one, and it's 100%. Weighs 22 grams. So here again we would have what? 18 grams. 22 grams. But with the lead on it, and actually it's tin. That's tin solder. Look, I'm up to 53. By the way, with 20. With the supports. And let's just say I decided to make use this instead of uh, that'd be 33. And a lot of people drill holes and put bolts in there and do all kinds of other things to create weight. And we want most of the weight around the rim as well. So to start with, I think I'll use this. Although I was considering this is extremely fine solder, and I could have got an awful lot of it on there because it's so fine, but the, again this is tin, that's a pound of tin, not, not the 50-50, it's hard to find that 50-50 by Canfield anymore. So, uh, let me start putting it together with this flywheel, which is, what did I say, 53 grams. While you were nodding and nearly napping, I went ahead and put a couple screws in there and fasten this down so it doesn't fall around on me as I work. I decided to put a couple real thin washers on each side of this. Now sure there should be a bearing in there. This is very thin. But remember this is just for the fun of it. Be nice to have a bearing and redesign this but if somebody wants to of course they can. Now I'm just for now going to push this on Now this is one that broke off on me. This hub broke off on me. It should look like this. So the one that I plan on using is this one eventually because you can see it's got two hubs on it. But for now I'm getting anxious here. Let's see if this goes on. It might be. I'm going to need a thicker washer in there, a spacer. But you can see there's a lot of weight there. All right, now I'm using this flywheel that I showed you a little while ago, and, and it does run on halitosis, but not as well as the other one. And here it is running on about three or four pounds of compressed air. And surprisingly it runs quite well on Kevin's flywheel and I never have removed the supports for it but it has just the right amount of weight. So 
So, thank you to Synaptic. Thank you to Kevin Peterson. And you can print this off on uh, Thingiverse if you have a notion to. It would be a good little project for father and son if you have a printer. It takes really all day to make all the prints. It was one and three quarter hour just for the cylinder. And you'll have to mount it on a wooden base like this original one. So, hope you liked the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long. And I'll see you in my next video.